Hey y'all, it's Coach in the Fight here, looking at Proverbs 31, but I'm not going to give the class. Guess who's going to do the class? Um, myself, Stacy, and Journey. And Journey, wow, this is the first time you guys are going to hear from Journey doing a class, so. And Stacy, you're going to drive the class, right? I'm just here to work these fancy buttons on this computer. Yep. Alright, so, let's have it. Proverbs 31. Okay, so um, me and Journey are starting a mother and daughter Bible study. Um, today is our Sabbath day, and so um, we thought, um, why not start with Proverbs 31? I understand Proverbs 31. It's talking about um, women in the Bible, so I guess for our mother-daughter Bible study, this will be a good choice for our first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we know that um, Solomon did the Proverbs, and um, this was his mother who was, uh, is, is it his mother speaking to him? I don't know. Yeah, this is, well, I read that one of Solomon's name was Lemuel. He had many different names in which he was called by, and Lemuel is one of them. So mm. I'm going to go with that, and with that we're going to go on talking about one through eight well i'm looking here at it does say that his mother taught him i'm looking here at the two different versions now we got two versions here because stacy understand you using the king james version and journey you're using what the living bible so we got both versions up here for you to see and i haven't done much study in in, in proverbs 31 because yeah i didn't see right there that it is his mother who taught him this wow very interesting all right well see. and his mother was Bathsheba, right? Uh, yeah. Solomon's mother was Bathsheba. Really? Right. You're going to have to teach me. You know I ain't good at them names. So Solomon I, I keep up with commands and what I need to be doing to keep forgetting my butt whooped. I don't keep up with so much of the names. And Yeah, Solomon's mom was Bathsheba. She was, remember, she was the one who David had killed, had, had her husband killed. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Wow. So that was his mom, the one that you sent the sent the guy in to die on the battlefield. He right. married him mom. Wow. Right. Okay, from so from there, some of her first words, uh, we're gonna say from uh, two through nine is just giving him uh, commands about um, well the first command that she gives, she says, Give not your strength to women. Or your your ways to those who destroy kings. That's verse three. That is verse three, and then she goes on to talk about um, don't be a heavy drinker, and from there she talks about how to help the poor and needy. So she kind of starts off talking to him about his own personal stuff. Right. But this is a chapter about women, right? Right. So where she starts, where the meat of it is, is chapter 10. Verse 10? Where every, verse 10, where everyone uh, remembers that quote. She says, who can find a good wife? Okay, well, I'm going to click down here. If anybody want to do some pre-reading, they can, you know, just push the pause button and push it down here. And Journey, feel free to jump in anytime you want now. Alright, so we're at verse 10. Okay, Journey, you want to read verse 10? Yeah. Okay. If you can find a truly good wife, she is worth more than precious gems. Okay, so Journey, what are some precious gems to you? Diamonds, um, emeralds, rubies, sapphires. Yeah, those are precious gems, amethysts, pearls, opals. We think of those as precious gems. And this is, as she's asking, if you find a good wife, a good wife is better than those jewels. That's what it sounds like. So well, it's harder, maybe it's harder to find or something. Or the price far above rubies. She is more valuable. Yeah. It's saying she a good wife. And we looked up wife who which is a married woman a married woman to her husband is more valuable than diamonds and pearls and emeralds and sapphires and gold and silver so that was one our first lesson is telling us that a good wife is more valuable than than gems I understand good wife is valuable we're 
looking at 11 where it says her husband trusts in her. Now, we also looked up trust. And trust means to have confidence with honesty, confidence in honesty, integrity, and reliability. So it says that her husband will have confidence in her. He will have integrity. And he will have be able to rely on her. Okay. And that... Or he by, will witness her integrity. He will understand her integrity. Right. Yeah. And by doing this, he will have no lack. No lack? What? No wait, wait, lack. Wait, wait. No lack. No lack of gain. No lack of gain. I guess it was so that he shall have no need of spoil. I guess you're right. Go ahead. Okay. So that was our number two. Number one. A good wife is more valuable than uh, jewels. And number two, a good wife has, uh, her husband is able to trust in her. Right. Okay, let's go to number 12, Journey. She will not hinder him, but help him all her life. Mine says she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Right? So, that's saying for the rest of the time that she's here, she is going to actively do him good all the days of her life. Now, Journey, what does that mean to you? Mm. Is it self-explanatory or? Um, I guess it just means to help, help him, not try to um, steer him off. When it says hinder. And not try to harm him. Yeah. Not try to harm him all the days of her life. She will do him good. So that's our third point. That she is a wife that will do her husband good and not harm all the days of her life. Number 11. 13. Number 13. 13. She's. Seeks wool and flax and works with willing hand, hands. Now we know that wool and flax were the two um, textiles that the father gave uh, the children of Israel. Wool for the winter, flax we know as linen for the summer. So it's saying that she takes these things that the father has given her and she works with them and she do, does it willingly. So that means that she's a what? She's a hard worker, right? She seeks these things. Journey's, I think Journey says she seeks, she, what well, mine says, she seeks wool and flax and she works with willing hands. Mm, mine, mine just says finds. Finds. Instead of sticks. Yeah. And, and it says she finds wool and flax and busily spins it. Right? So she's going out there and finding. So where's she gonna find the wool at? And she, maybe she's in the market, but maybe she's out there shearing sheep too. Remind me of these sheep shears we got right here. She um she's out there getting the wool. She brings it back home and then she's making garments out of it. Yeah, she's making garments and she's taking these garments and we'll talk about it later where she does things with these garments. So number fourteen says that she is like the ships of the merchant she brings her food from afar and when me and journey was talking about it today we we in today's term we get our food from like some things i would suppose that we get from china mm -hmm. that we import over to um, the united states we get from possibly mexico you know a lot of the fruits you see um at the grocery store to say a uh, product of mexico or product of portugal or or whatever uh, the exotic fruits and stuff. So, but it says she's like, she's like the merchant ships where she goes out and she finds um, things and she brings it back to her home. And that remind me and Journey used the word for a gatherer. Mm -hmm. So she's a gatherer, and she brings these things back to her home. Right. So. Okay. So she's a go getter, huh? Yep, she's a gatherer. Yep, she's a go getter. And we were thinking about this woman is doing a lot of work. Journey, is that what we said? Sometimes it, it seems like she's it's kind of unfair that she's doing a lot of work. But we're gonna go on and we're gonna see the father's going. Journey's being bashful. All right, let's go. Okay, number fifteen. 
Johnny, I'm gonna let you read that one. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plans the day's work for her servant girls. Mine says she rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and tasks for her maidens. So she gets up early. She's an early bird. And I think we were talking about this uh, early in the week where we're going to start getting up earlier. And it does make a difference when you, when you get up early and start preparing. And doing this study, I learned that not only is she preparing food for her household, but she's also writing out tasks for her children. Yeah. Yeah, for planning, planning their day. Because if you don't plan their day... What they're going to do uh, do is get up and the first thing they want to do is start playing. Right. So she she gets up, she pa prepares breakfast, uh, probably prepares what we're going to have for lunch, what we're going to have for dinner, and then she starts preparing tasks for her, her maidens. We need service. a chapter like this for men. Well, I, don't know, I guess the rest of the Bible. All right, let's go. Okay. Number 16. 16. I'm getting hard to show both. Both versions on the same page, but go ahead. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. So that tells me that she's out. Is she out purchasing land? Yeah. She's out purchasing land, considering land, and she actually uh, probably comes back, talks it over with her husband, and she goes out and she does the deal. Yeah, and then probably plants it and grows stuff on it and brings it back home and feeds it to her family. This is a very busy lady. She's all over it. Yeah, yeah. Number 17 says she girdles her loins with strength and makes her arms strong. She's a hard worker. It's like you said, she's a busy lady. She, she's a hard worker. It says, and she's energetic, a hard worker, and watches for bargains. She works far into the night. So she's up early and up late at night. This lady's on it. Yep. Number 18, Journey. Well, we, yeah, we did number 18. Well, I'll yeah, we yeah. put, it, put it together over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number 19, Journey. Mine says 19 and 20. Go ahead. Yeah. She sows for the poor and generously gives to the needy. Putting her hands to the spindle, um, helping the poor. I think you would say that she would do. A, she was out doing merits. Yeah, she's doing charitable deeds. She's finding opportunities to help people, right? So she's out doing merits, helping the poor, helping those that are needy that don't have. So she's not only a hard worker, but she's uh, charitable as well. Let's go on to number 21. 21, 21 Journey. She has no fear of winter for her household, for she has made warm clothes for all of them. Okay, she's uh, with this spindle and with this uh, wool and flax. She is prepared for the seasons to come. She has no worry that her children will be cold. Uh, she's um, got all their jackets together. She got their wool socks together. She got them boots together and all this other stuff. She's doing what she's supposed to be doing as not only a wife, but as a mother as well. That reminds me of last year when you made all of those hats. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of what? Crochet hats? A lot of crochet hats for the kids, so they didn't necessarily have to worry about their heads being cold or we were just prepared for that. So many so, heads, it's a lot of hats to be buying from the store. So, very good. Number 22, Journey. And I'm trying to, for you guys watching this, you have the version that Journey's reading from on the right. Um, and I'm reading from the King James Version on the left. And they are disjointed. I can't keep them on the, on the same page. I'm thinking I'm abandoning one. But we're going to finish the show. Let's go. 22. She also upholsters with finest tapestry, and her own clothing is beautifully made, a purple gown of pure linen. We'll let you read the next one as well. Her husband is well known for he sits in the council chamber with the other civic leaders. Okay, so going back to 22, is she takes care of herself. She, uh... 
He's not necessarily walking around in a robe and house shoes or hair, hair looking wild and whatever. She is, she takes care of herself because she is a reflection of her husband. Oh, and look what her husband is doing. So the husband is down in the gates sitting among the elders of the land. He's out doing the Lord's work. Out doing the Lord's work. Right. So, That's a good way of putting it. Okay. Huh. And I can see why a lot of women have brought. Wait, wait, wait. He's sitting at the gates. <laughs> this lady going from far lands and getting stuff. Go ahead. Well, you, you think about it. You know, the elders. Remember how Absalom would sit at the gate? And the elders, how um, mm, mm, well, you know, Mordecai, said. Mordecai would sit at the gate. And so all the Lot was sitting at the gate when the angel showed up. Angel uh, Abraham was sitting at the gate. Um, so what is the significance Job sat of the, at the gate? gate? I guess that might be another. What it said, the council of the elders. He's like you say, he's doing the Lord's work. So he's amongst the elders of the community, and you know, you know, uh, like I said, doing the Lord's work. Council of the. Wait, let me see. I didn't did it before. I need to find me some gates and some of these council members to go sit with. So her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Council chambers with other civic leaders is what. Yeah. Today's term, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Number 25. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. So when I think of strength, when it says strength and dignity are her clothing, it reminds me of um, when... Um, the scripture says that don't let, just let your hair be braided, don't be adorned with the braiding of your hair, but, um, um, I can't think of the rest of that scripture, but it tells us it's not just physically, not just physical, it's, um, your character and, um, strength and dignity are her clothing. I'm going to have to jump in here. I've been trying to stay a little bit out of this because, you know, it's a mother-daughter Bible study. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it says right here, rejoice in the time to come. So that's a hint that he's talking about a futuristic time, that he's actually talking about the tribulation. But look what he says, strength and honor are her clothing. So because she has strength in the word or honor in, 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 in the word or, or, or she has the necessary strength and honor, these tribulous times that are coming, she's actually going to rejoice in it. Whereas the other lady, who's not clothed in strength or honor, is going to have a pretty rough time in the tribulation. That's what it means to me. Okay. About the things that are to come. Yeah. She rejoices in the things that are, come, are to come. When he's talking about stuff to come, he's usually talking about his... his uh, tribulation you know. is about is upon us. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teachings of, of the and the teachings of kindness is on her tongue. So it tells us that she is not only has wisdom in her mouth, but she has kindness. She's kind as well. Okay. Journey, you want to get to 27? Yeah. She watches carefully all that goes on throughout her household and is never lazy. So, of course, throughout we've seen that this lady is not idle. She's constantly busy. So she ain't laying on the cop playing with a cell phone. I said I was going to stay out of this. All right, let's go. <laughs> her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. 29, many women have done excellently, but you suppress, surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears... Yah is to be praised. Journey, you want to do the last one? Praise her for many fine things she does. These good deeds of her shall bring her honor and recognition from even the leaders of the nations. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. So that's saying that in the gates, that's saying that her husband will praise her among the people. Again. Oh, he doesn't have to. Her, her, her actions is what's going to bring her the praise. It's her deeds, what she's doing that's actually going to make. Because a woman like this, because you really imagine when you are down, when, when, when the husband is down there with the, 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 these council members and, and the wives show up. Now, on the one hand, you got a wife that 
doesn't really care anything about these traits talked about here in Proverbs 31. And she's standing there amongst these council members. All these guys are looking at you know, her. Whereas the other lady who is doing all of this stuff according to you know Proverbs 31 and maybe doing some more stuff that's not listed here. You can imagine when this lady enters the room how the men in the room are going to respect this lady. I mean this is a lot of stuff this lady's doing. Whereas if she's doing the opposite, if she's lazy and that, she's going to bring shame to herself. But this lady who's following these traits here listed, she's going to bring a lot of glory and honor to herself. Her, man, her husband's not going to have to say much at all, except, that's my wife. Yeah, that's I just true. Them both. Yeah. Hey, I know you're talking when you got all the women in the house quiet. I must have said something good. Oh, bad. Which one was it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff she's doing. It's a lot, you know, it's a, so many um, sermons and so many um, Bible studies are done on Proverbs 31. But this lady is, she's, she's amazing. Yeah. All right. Well. So this was, this was our first Bible study. It was kind of, it was fun. Me and Journey got to um, sit down and talk about scripture together, which is something that we haven't been practicing. She do her reading, I do my reading, but this was fun to be able to sit down and talk about it. And um, hopefully we learned something from it. This was a very good class. I think that I messed it up with this video, with the uh, visual part of it. If anybody's trying to follow, they, they would have had a hard time. But I think you guys did such a great job that, you know, I'm going to take my error and y'all can leave the comments as far as, you know, how confusing it was jumping, up, you know, from one translation to another. But, you know, remember that these guys, they, they, they're the ones who were doing this class, and I think they did a good job, and they should be commended for that, so. All right, any closing comments? Yeah, I just wanted to tell people that not only um, Proverbs, um, you know, throughout Scripture, there's a lot of um, information about um, how to be a good wife and different stuff uh, are the virtuous women and the good and evil. But also uh, take a look into the book of Sirach. Mm. Uh, it talks a lot, 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 lot lot really? about wicked virtuous women uh, the things happy as a wife I mean there's so much it's like oh, the whole whole three or four different chapters are written straightly for uh, women so we listen we look forward to that class when we gonna have that class when you gonna do when y'all gonna do that related today uh, I don't know <laughs> the related today's but, but we will uh, We'll study some more. We'll What's, what chapter is that? Sirach what? Look at, look at Sirach uh, 26. Look at Sirach 25. Um, you know, let me just give you a, a, a one example of Sirach 25. It says, Do not be ensnared by a woman's beauty. and Do not desire a woman for her possessions. Uh, there is wrath and impudence and great disgrace when a wife supports a husband. A dejected man, mind, a gloomy face, and a wounded heart. Are caused by an evil wife. So now that sound gets directed toward the man. So is all yeah. of it's going to be kind of saying, "Hey, watch out for these ladies." Yes. <laughs> okay. So it's the right. So all yeah. right. Says so here's another one. Twenty six. It said, "Happy is the husband of a good wife. The number of his days will be doubled." So doubled. Stuff little proverbs like that. So it has it's just little proverbs. All righty then, Journey. You got any close? Go ahead and close us out, Jeremy. Uh, Shalom. Hermes Academy. Okay. Shalom. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.